Massachusetts CDL has mat practice test. Question 1. Which of the following materials would be an acceptable floor liner for moving Division 1.1 or 1.2 materials? A. Non-ferrous metal. B. Stainless steel. C. Carbon steel. D. All of the above. Answer A. The floor lining for moving materials from either categories 1.1 or 1.2 must be either non-ferrous metals or non-metallic materials. Both stainless steel and carbon steel represent ferrous metals. Question 2. The Emergency Response Guidebook ERG A. Was created by the National Department of Transportation, so it is used nationwide. B. Contains an index of hazardous material ID numbers, which is why you must label things correctly. C. Is studied by emergency personnel to help keep the public safe. D. All of the above. Answer D. The Emergency Response Guidebook, or ERG was created by the Department of Transportation and is used by emergency personnel such as firefighters and paramedics to respond to trucking emergencies. The guidebook is indexed by hazardous material identification number, which is why it is very important that shipping papers are labeled correctly. Question 3. How far away are you allowed to park from a bridge, tunnel? or building if you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials? A. At least 300 feet. B. At least 400 feet. C. At least 600 feet. D. At least 500 feet. Answer A. When driving with a load of Division 1.1, 1.2, or 1.3 hazardous materials, which are explosives, you must park at least 300 feet away from any bridge, tunnel, or structure. You must maintain the same distance from any gathering place or open fire. Question 4. Which of the following is not an acceptable type of marking for hazardous materials? A. Descriptive name in Roman print. B. Name in italics. C. Identification number. D. UN marks. Answer B. A hazardous materials proper shipping name should be displayed strictly in Roman print, which means there should be no italics. Acceptable markings would include the appropriate descriptive name from the subchapter in your manual as well as UN marks, instructions, weight, ID number, specification, cautions, or some combination of the above. Question 5. If you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials, how far away must you park from the traveled portion of the roadway? A. At least 5 feet. B. At least 10 feet. C. At least half a mile. D. At least 20 feet. Answer A. If you are carrying explosive materials from Division 1.2 or 1.3, never park your vehicle less than 5 5 feet away from a traveled section of the road or highway. If you cannot make it even 5 feet, then it is a very serious emergency indeed and you should be calling emergency services personnel if you have explosives on board. Question 6. How often should you check the tires on a placarded trailer that has dual tires? A. Once every 3 hours. B. Once every 100 miles. C. Each time you stop. D. Start of each day and every time you stop. Answer D. If you have a trailer with placards and dual tires, 
You should check your tires at the beginning of each day and each time that you stop for any reason, whether that's for a rest or to refuel. Remember that you must use a tire pressure gauge to get an accurate reading. Question 7. Where are the two main places where the hazardous material identification number appears? A. On the shipping papers and on a secret document in the driver's wallet. B. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping destination. C. On the shipping papers and on the package. D. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping point of origin. Answer C. The two main places where you must keep the hazardous material identification numbers are on your shipping papers and on the packages themselves, as these are the places that emergency personnel have been trained to check immediately. Question 8. Which hazard classes must you never smoke, or perform any activity involving fire, within 25 feet of? A. Class 4.2 only. B. Class 1 only. C. Classes 1, 2, 3, and 4. D. Class 5.2 only. Answer C. While you should not add the risk of smoking in extremely close proximity of any class of hazardous material, the additional rules are. No smoking within 25 feet of classes 3 and 2.1 flammable materials and gases and no smoking or holding a lighted smoking object such as a cigar or a pipe within 25 feet of classes 1, 3, 4, or 4.2 explosives, flammable liquids and solids, and spontaneous combustibles. Question 9. Which of the following is not something you need to know in order to determine if you need to use placards? A. The amount of a substance or material being shipped. B. The substance or materials hazard class. C. The manufacturing date for the materials. D. The amount of all hazardous materials of all classes in your vehicle. Answer C. You do not need to know when a product is manufactured or expires unless your company has an additional responsibility. When it comes to hazardous materials, you do need to know the amount of the hazardous material being shipped, its hazard class, and what will be the total amount of all hazardous materials of all classes on your commercial vehicle during your trip. Question 10. In what location must you keep your shipping papers which describe any hazardous materials? A. In a fire-safe pouch under the driver's seat that you can reach while you are driving. B. On the driver's seat any time you are outside of the vehicle. C. In a fire-safe pouch under the passenger seat while you are driving. D. In a locked glove compartment any time you are outside of the vehicle. Answer B. Your shipping papers for hazardous materials must be visible and accessible to emergency personnel at all times, which includes when you are out of the vehicle. This is why, when you are away from your truck, they must be placed on your driver's seat in easy reach for emergencies. Question 11. If you are already carrying 100 pounds of silver cyanide, what precautions must you take if you are given papers at a dock to carry 100 cartons of battery acid? A. Make sure there is plenty of space between the two. B. Inform someone and not load the battery acid. C. Make sure the silver cyanide is loaded on top of the battery acid. D. Make sure the battery acid is loaded on top of the silver cyanide. Answer B. Silver cyanide and battery acid are on the list of products that cannot travel together for safety reasons. Check the Do Not Load table in your manual.
Division 6.1 materials like silver cyanide cannot be loaded with acids or corrosive materials which could combine to make hydrocyanic acid. Question 12. What is the main difference between a portable tank and a cargo tank? A. Portable tanks must additionally show the owner or lessee's name on them. B. Cargo tanks are filled while on the vehicle, portable tanks are filled while off the vehicle. C. Cargo tanks are permanently attached, portable tanks are temporarily attached. D. All of the above. Answer D. There are several key differences between cargo tanks and portable tanks, but the key facts have to do with the permanence of cargo tanks. Since they are stuck to commercial vehicles permanently, they will be filled while they are on the vehicle, and they do not need to display an owner's name separately. A portable tank can be filled on or off a vehicle, then attached, and must display the owner or lessee's name. Question 13. Which of the following is a necessary qualification for non-bulk packaging? A. A maximum capacity of 450 liters or less if it is used as a receptacle for liquids. B. Maximum water capacity of 454 kilograms or less if used as a receptacle for gases. C. Maximum net mass of 400 kilograms or less than 450 liters if used as a receptacle for a solid. D. All of these are necessary qualifications. Answer D. Non-bulk packaging has specific qualifications if it is being used as a receptacle for solids, liquids, or gases. For each, there is a maximum net mass for it to qualify as non-bulk. 450 liters or less for liquids, 400 kilograms or less for solids, and 454 kilograms or less for gases. Question 14. The two other places where the hazardous identification number must appear are A. On the gas tank and a sticker in the glove compartment. B. Any bulk packaging and the cargo tanks. C on a temporary license plate holder and the steering wheel. D. On the back of the truck and inside the glove compartment. Answer B. In addition to the main two items that you must have the hazardous identification number on, you must also display it on the cargo tanks and on all bulk packaging. Question 15. Which of the following hazard classes utilizes a transport index in order to determine how much of it can be loaded on a single vehicle for transport? A. Class 1, Explosives B. Class 4, Live Chickens C. Class 7, Radioactive Materials D. Class 3, Flammable Liquids Answer C. Class 7, radioactive materials, must be controlled by a transport index that tells each transport company and truck driver how much they can carry, as the packages themselves are emitting waves that could contaminate the rest of the load. Question 7. Where are the two main places where the hazardous material identification number appears? A on the shipping papers and on a secret document in the driver's wallet. B. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping destination. C. On the shipping papers and on the package. D. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping point of origin. Answer B. The term safe haven refers to a place created by local authorities, where you can safely leave your truck unattended while you are carrying explosive material. This solves a trucking dilemma that has often left drivers to make somewhat dangerous decisions, such as driving through the night so that they can stay with their load. Question 17. What is the purpose of a driver placarding his or her vehicle? 
A. Forcing other drivers to stay 20 feet away in every direction. B. Communicating risk. C. Warning those with children to drive in another lane. D. Giving people something interesting to look at while driving. Answer B. You must file an official report within 10 days, using Form SR1, if any of the incidents listed happen. Your employer will have their own rules about company reporting and driving their trucks. Question 18. Cargo tanks are A. Only made in one size. B. Bulk packaging permanently attached to your vehicle. C. Bulk packaging temporarily attached to your vehicle. D. Filled while they are off your vehicle, then attached for transportation. Answer B. Cargo tanks are the style of tanks that are permanently attached to your commercial vehicle. There are many different styles used for a variety of different materials. Question 19. Do you need to stop before a railroad crossing if you are hauling 100 pounds of Division 4.3 materials? A. Impossible to tell without more information. B. Only if the arm is down telling vehicles to stop. C. No. D. Yes. Answer D. If your vehicle is placarded, you must stop from 15 to 50 feet from the nearest rail before all railroad crossings. Once you have done this, proceed when you are sure there is no train coming, and do not shift while you are on the tracks. Question 20. What action should you take if there is no phone available and you discover your hazardous materials shipment leaking at a rest stop? A. Keep driving slowly and cautiously, until you reach a phone. B. Keep driving for help as quickly as possible. C. Send someone for help with all the necessary information. D. Leave your truck parked with emergency lights on and walk for help. Answer C. Cleaning up a spill, a huge contamination in particular would be incredibly expensive. If you notice a leak, therefore, stop as soon as you possibly can and get off the road. Stay with your vehicle, due to liability and safety issues, and send someone else for help. As you must send a large amount of vital information including where you are, your direction of travel, the hazard class and ID numbers, your carrier's location, the package's destination, and more make sure you write it all down. Question 21. Which of the following three hazard classes should not be placed into a temperature-controlled trailer or one with a heater, air conditioner unit? A. Classes 1, 3, and 4. B. Classes 1, 3, and 6. C. Classes 1, 2.1, and 3. D. Classes 1, 4, and 5.1. Answer C. The three hazard classes that must be kept in a trailer without automatic heating and cooling are, explosives 1, flammable gases 2.1, and flammable liquids 3, as they are particularly volatile. Question 22. Your engine runs a pump when you are delivering compressed gas. Should you turn off your engine before or after you unhook the hoses after finishing that delivery? A. Leave it on the entire time. B. Turn it off on arrival, use other power to run the pump. C. Turn it off before unhooking. D. Turn it off after unhooking. Answer C. If your engine is required to be on when you are pumping a load of compressed gas, you are always adding an extra layer of danger to a situation. Make sure that you turn off the engine before you unhook any hoses.
as soon as the delivery is completed. Question 23, what is a technical name? A. The name for a hazardous material most commonly used on the street. B. The name for a hazardous material used in scientific journals and texts, recognized as its chemical and microbiological name. C. The medical term for hazardous materials used by medical personnel. D. The name for a hazardous material most commonly used in the trucking community, accepted as standard. Answer B. The technical name is one used by scientists, which appears in journals, articles, and technical handbooks. It provides a standard terminology for referring to various dangerous substances, instead of using any one slang terms, which can vary to dangerous effects from region to region. Question 24. A placarded vehicle must carry what type of fire extinguisher? A. One with the rating of 5 BC minimum. B. One with a rating of 10 BC minimum. C. One with a rating of 10 AB minimum. D. One with a rating of 5 AB minimum. Answer B. All placarded vehicles are required to have a fire extinguisher certified by the underwriters a laboratory often written as all to put out a minimum 10 square feet of a Class B fire, which includes almost all flammable liquids, and is non-conducive due to its C rating. Question 25. What are shippers trying to accomplish when they package the material? A. Make it as light as possible. B. Make it easy to open and close. C. Make it easy to identify. D. All of the above. Answer C. The regulations for hazardous materials are designed so that shippers make packages easy for drivers, destination personnel, and emergency personnel to identify the contents quickly and easily. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like and share.